I do want to take a minute and thank the people who helped put this on. Uh, so that that is Seth Hall back there, uh, Vi Wynn, uh, who's here with the San Diego Foundation, uh, Zach Warma from uh, from Voice of San Diego, and uh, Glenn. And I'm going to kill your name, Glenn. Uh, Glenn Batuyang. Uh, who's, who's videotaping all this for people who couldn't make it today or who just thought the speakers talked too fast. Um, so the next speaker, and, and I feel a little bad that, that I made you wait this long for her, um, because Jessica's going to talk to you about users and usability. And with all this technology, um, it's kind of pointless if people aren't actually using it. So. I've had the pleasure of working with Jessica at two companies. She now works at UCSD in their IT department. Uh, she also runs RailsBridge, which helps um, uh, introduce women to programming. It's an awesome, awesome program. Um, I would sign up for it if I could. Um, <laughs> good luck to me. OK. And without further insults, Jessica. I'm not being Because I got cards. And what is UX? Simply, U is for user and X is for experience. But UX isn't just software. You use UX every day. You got to package from Amazon, you turn on your stove. That's all UX. But with software, we think of UX and we think, oh, that's nice. That's nice to have. I'm here to change your mind. It's not just nice to have, it's a requirement. Ben loves to label me as a UX expert, but I prefer the term user expert. I am a nerd, but I'm passionate about people. And UX is the confluence of business needs and user needs. And that middle part is the important part. But this is what we always say, right? The user isn't smart enough. They don't get it. They're not trying. We always blame the user, but it's our fault, right? It's our software. We're, we're writing this. And if they don't get it, then we need to look at UX. So we do UX all the time, right? We find a problem, we try to solve it, and then we say, there's got to be a better way to do that. That's UX. But it's also being able to determine this outside of a gut instinct. We have to look at analytics and goals, the whole picture, <coughs> and user testing. But there's something that UX is not, which is always what I get. It's not just the pretty stuff. It's not UI, it's not making it look good, it's not the icing on the cupcake, it's the whole darn cupcake. But you might say, okay, Jessica, humans write software, so by default, aren't they really doing UX? I'm going to tell you, your software developers are not human. <laughs> you might think they are, but they have a bias that is intrinsic to software development. They know the goal already. So even if they pretend to be the user, they're not the user. So you can say, well, Jessica, we don't know, so we're just going to put something out there and then just wait for users to give us feedback. No. Users are liars. It's not that they mean to lie. What they're saying is, I want your software to do X. What you, the UX question behind that is why you want the software to do X. And if you can't solve that, you're not doing UX. So why do you care? Well, the bottom line is, is you're in government and you care because you care about the people. These are your constituents. This is your community. That's why you care. If you're doing development without UX, basically you're saying, eh, we can get by without the people. But you also care because you're in government and you don't get any funding. You have not enough staff. And UX is all about efficiency. It's making your product work harder. If you write a piece of software and your users can't use it, you just spend a lot of money on a piece of software that nobody uses. But finally, you care because UX builds advocates. I'm a big proponent of this. In government, you're not selling software. You're selling a service. And UX is a service. So, the fact that users will appreciate and respond to it and then talk about it to other people, that's why you're in government. So this is exactly what you want. All right, so I just spent 10 slides convincing you that you gotta do UX. And you're like, Jessica, I wanna do UX, but it's expensive and complicated and this is really, really a lot of information in 20 seconds a slide. I have 10 more, don't worry. <laughs> We're almost there, I'm gonna tell you how to do it. So the first thing I want you to look at is products that are already out there. 
Maybe you have an idea from your user <laughs> feedback that maybe your UX isn't all that great. We're going to take a look and look at the first five things that you should address when you have an existing product. One is your requirements. What are you doing? What is the business purpose of the software? For example, let's say you have a piece of software that's supposed to reduce the lines at the DMV, right? Your business goal is to increase revenue by getting those fees in faster and also reduce your staff by having shorter lines at the DMV. That's your business purpose. But you also have to look at what is the user's requirement for this email or for this software. What are your users? Who are they? If you know your users, you're also going to have to look at the human factors surrounding your users. Are you building a mobile app for people who don't have smartphones? Or are you building a graphical interface for people who have bandwidth issues? That's the human factors that surround your users, and you need to know those before you start. But where do you start if you have an existing product? Well, three, what's your primary task? Your software does so much stuff, but what's the primary task? Figure out where that task is and concentrate your UX on that. Focus on it, because that's where you're going to start with your UX. Four is where I lose people, usability testing. People flip out. It's too complicated, it's too expensive, but I'm telling you, it's not. Rec recruit your existing users. The person who complained will be the happiest that you invite them in to talk about the software. Sit down with them in a room, ask them questions, write down the responses. That's usability testing. The hard part is this, which is five, analyzing all that information. Why is it hard? Because you have to check your ego at the door. Maybe you wrote it. Maybe you were part of building it. If it's not accomplishing what you set out to do, you have to rewrite it. And in the same vein, if you test it and you go back and it doesn't work, you've got to rewrite it again. This is what a UX expert has in their background. Hire a professional if you can. I know if you have an existing product because I work at UCSD, you can't get the budget because the product already exists. But if you can convince someone, get them on board. If you have new products, put that person on the budget before you start. Now, new software has to follow the same requirements as old software, except you get to start before you actually code. Writing new software should be a collaborative process between the developer, the UX manager, and your users. So that's me giving you UX in a nutshell by a user expert. Now, I'm gonna recommend an older blog called Creating Passionate Users, which basically talks about not UX, but creating products that people love, because I essentially think that's what we're all here to do, is to create something that other people want to use.